The OHL trade deadline has passed and the Kitchener Rangers have made a number of moves over the course of this season. Uh, I am pleased to be joined by Kitchener Rangers General Manager Mike McKenzie. Mike, as we said, the trade deadline has passed. You now know concretely who the Kitchener Rangers are for this year. How happy are you with the makeup of the team right now? Yeah, I think we're happy with how it all unfolded from a management perspective. Um, we went into the last month or so before the trade deadline with a little bit of a plan in place to to add to our team. And um, we had certain targets of guys that we were looking to add and it actually went fairly um, how we wanted it to. Um, looking at the guys we had, we thought we we needed a you know, up, an upgrade on our, our D um, and more provided that and a score with our Curry and a little bit more speed and a two-way center that can play against anyone's anyone's line and also provide offense with Zilkin. So um, it went how we had hoped, I think. And uh, at the end of the day, we really wanted to hang on to our young players and make sure that we weren't um, giving those players up in trades. Anytime you can keep those guys, um, you know, guys like Andonofsky and Rakoff that are they're important pieces to our team now, but they're going to be even more important in the future. And so we chose to go with moving out draft picks as opposed to young players. And uh, that was kind of the goal. And uh, I think we were happy with how it unfolded. So one of the things that, that you've had a history of in the past few years is making that early season move that's significant and not waiting until right before the trade deadline. And you picked up Marco Costantini early this year. How key was that in terms of uh, getting him at the price you wanted as opposed to what it would have been later in the year and, and really especially with Jackson Parsons going down with injury. Yeah I mean that was the key at the time we didn't know that um, so looking back on it it's you know you, you you're really thankful that we made that decision at that time because obviously with Jackson's injury shortly thereafter um, we were we'd be in a really really tough spot with uh, with Jackson and no Marco so and, and Marcus has played unbelievable for us this year, so he's he stepped up huge for us. But um, just that's the way things work out sometimes. And at that time, we felt like we, we, we needed some stability, and Marco came in and provided us with that. Um, we, both, we, we still have a lot of faith in Jackson, obviously. His year has been a tough one for him, and he'll bounce back, though, and he's a really good goalie. And Marcus has stepped up, so... We've got three guys here, and if you even want to throw Luca DeFelice in there, um, uh, one of our 16-year-old prospects that we've signed, we've really got four guys that you know are at, they're all at different stages in their development, but guys that we really feel can can be really good goalies in our leagues. They, some of them already are, and in Luca's case, could be down the road. So um, the trade just made sense at the time, and and looking back on it, it was probably the right move. And and in the coming weeks, we we needed it at that point with the injury and, and where we were at. So um, it worked out well for us. You mentioned that the mindset this year was to trade draft picks away and you had an excess of them uh, due to some trades and due to some stockpiling rather, as opposed to trading away some young players. Uh, in the past, Mike, you and I have talked about your model for this team. You know, you don't want it to be a one-year plan. You want it to be sustainable over a number of years, you know, really ongoing with the Rangers. So giving up as many draft picks as you did this year, do you still think you have that sustainability model that you strive for? Yeah, I think so. And that's the reason why we didn't want to give up the young players because those are actual real people that play on your team and we know who they are and what they're about and, and how they can contribute to our team this year, but also in the next year or two years or three years. So, um, you know, that, that was the reason, again, like I said, for the draft picks being included and more of them being included as opposed to the young players so um, I think w you know with the draft picks there there's there's a plan to get those back at some point and um, in terms of the sustainability I think you know you're not going to be you know at the top every single year and and I think you know what we saw last year was a year where maybe we weren't at the top of the standings. We made a decision to sell some of our players, accumulate assets um, via those trades, and then you, you build it back up. And, but in those down years, your goal is to for sure make the playoffs and try to win around and try to get some experience for your younger players so you can build the next year and, and move on and have that experience and, and give them that. So I think last year was a perfect example of what a potential 
down year may look like in terms of finishing where we did and then winning a round um, was awesome to get that experience and playing in the second round of the playoffs. So um, in terms of the sustainability question, that's kind of how we see it. Um, you know, and then in up years, you want to you want to be in the top four and and try to win two, three, four rounds. Ultimately, win the whole thing is your goal, um, and you can't do that every year, obviously. But you want to give yourself a chance, and that's what we thought coming into this year. And we still hopefully feel we can be there um, with the team we have, um, you know, down the stretch here. So um, it's not always going to look, you know, like this. There's going to be some dips at some points, but we just want to make sure those dips aren't too big. So you talk about building the assets and, and identifying the year that it's time to go for it. Uh, junior hockey is always so cyclical. What is it about this team this year that made you identify that this is the year that the Rangers are going to go for it? I think just the overall level of talent on our team. Um, you know, I think every team you every team you go into every year with a couple question marks. No team's perfect, and no team's um, completely loaded from top to bottom. You know, right at the start of the year. Um, but I think just looking at our talent level at all positions, we thought um, with the team we had last year, we were we were returning you know almost all players um, except Petizian, Nole, and Mutter, I believe. So um, they're obviously big pieces to our team last year. But with that many players returning, that um, you know finished in seventh place and had a good run you know down the stretch and then won that playoff series and put up a decent fight in the second round against the team that went on to eventually come within you know a game of winning the the league championship we thought with that returning core and you know adding a hunter brustevich adding a philip mace our first round nhl pick adding uh thomas hamara third round nhl pick um and then you know looking at the trades and then adding an Curry, adding a more adding a um uh yeah, Zelkin and, 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 and Constantini, yeah. yeah. So once you start stacking those, you have the core in place and you start stacking those other guys on top, then um, that was kind of the idea is that, you know, if we were here last year and we had something good going on, if everyone's a year older, Rakoff's a year older, Martin's a year older, Sop's a year older, Motu's a year older, Pinelli, and the list goes on and on. Those internal guys are a year older. They should be a year better and stronger. And then you stack it with other guys that we added. Um, it should be a good recipe, and that was kind of our thought process coming into this year. So when you talk about the cycles of, of junior hockey, right, you, you, I've heard previous GMs or even you yourself say it with previous teams, you know, you've got a Skinner and a Landeskog, you kind of have to go for it. You've got a Ryan Murphy and a John Gibson, you owe it to the fans to go for it. You've got Adam Maskerin and Cole Sherwood and Logan Brown and Logan Stanley, you owe it to the fans to go for it. Is that really, like, Ranger Nation is always striving for a championship. Is that really what you're seeing with this team? Yeah, it is. I mean, at the end of the day, that's that's it, right? And we we have a great fan base here, and we're supported through the really good years, and we're supported through the not so great years. And um, when we feel like we have talent, and we feel like we have enough skill and talent in our lineup that we should be in the mix, then um, that was our mindset this year: is that you know we have to try to make a push for it, and this might be our best chance if you kind of project ahead and junior hockey is impossible to predict. There's teams that think they're going to be really good and they're not as good. And there's teams that think it might be a down year and all of a sudden they're in first or second place. It happens all the time. We're seeing it this year on both ends of the spectrum. So you can't really, really fully predict. There's so much change with the players from year to year. Um, but we, we kind of circled this year again for the reasons I noted earlier that like this could be a year where we should be we should be good and we should have a lot of talent and older players and returning players so um yeah i really do believe when you have those years that you do owe it to the fan base to try to make a push and um, sometimes it means giving up assets and draft picks and, and young players and we've done it before um, if you look back to um, i think it was 2017 if my memory serves me correctly but that was the the uh, year where we lost to the Sioux in the Western Conference Finals in Game 7 of double overtime. So we made some significant um, ads that year and felt like we were in the mix, so we went for it. Um, and we had a little bit of a you know rebuilding year in 18. And then 19, 
you know, we did the same thing. We had a good team and we, we added not as much. It was a bit of a different year. There wasn't as much market for adding players, but we added Sarah Noel. Um, and then, you know, we don't know what happened in that year with COVID uh, shutting everything down. So, um, you know, but that was another really good team. So we had kind of gone really good team year to kind of rebuild it, really good team. And then last year was another kind of year to kind of rebuild it. And then this was eventually uh, supposed to be another one of those years where we added again. So we've kind of gone, um, you know, every other year type thing. And, uh, you know, that, that was kind of the mindset. Well, right now, this team on paper has the offense. It's got the defensive core. It's got strong goaltending. It's got great leadership. And last season, uh, you waited till the spring to play the best hockey of the year. And let's hope that the Rangers can do that again this year in the second half of the season. Mike, thanks for taking time with us and uh, breaking down the trade deadline. Yeah, that's the plan. Thanks for having me, Sean. We'll be back with more right after this.